What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender beginner tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to continue our series on getting started with Blender by talking more about edit mode. So in the last video we talked about the workspace and also about object mode, which is the mode where you can kind of manage your objects, move them around, do other things like that. In this video I wanted to talk more about edit mode, which is where you're going to take those objects and start making edits to make them into different 3D shapes inside of your models. So um, as always, if you have a comment or a question about anything I talk about in this video, leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to try to help you out. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you remember in the last video, we did talk a little bit about object mode, which is where you can select different objects inside of your model. It's also where you're going to add things and you can make some minor changes like scaling and other things like that. But in today's video, I wanted to talk more about edit mode where you can actually adjust things like the lines and edges and vertices. That's where you're going to start creating shapes inside of Blender um, that are more customized. So um, to start off, what I'm going to do so that everybody's on the same page is I'll remove my default model and I'll just do a shift A. And I'm just going to add a cube. I'm going to scale it down a little bit just by tapping the S key and moving my mouse. And uh, so what we want to do is we want to now go into edit mode and make some adjustments to this cube. And so the way that we're going to do that is you can access edit mode by selecting an object and then you can either come up here and click the drop down and click on edit mode or you can hit the tab key on your keyboard. So you can see how when you hit the tab key on your keyboard, what that's going to do is that's going to put you into a different mode. And then you can immediately tell that you're in a different mode because you get a lot more tools on the left hand side as well as more options on the top of the page, a couple buttons right here, things like that. And so with edit mode active, you can now start making changes to your model. So for example, um, you can start moving around individual parts and pieces of the model inside of edit mode. So you can see how I can move this around. I can move just things associated with like this corner or other things like that. I can start really making those changes in here. And so in order to do that, there's one thing I want you to understand first, which is the difference or the definition of some things that we have inside of our 3D space. So, and specifically, you can kind of see these up here. So there's three different modes that we usually end up using when we're in edit mode. So there's vertex select mode, there's edge select mode, and then there's face select mode. Right, and so those three things are going to be the three ways that we kind of edit our objects. Um, and so let's talk about what those are. So a vertex is basically any of these little points where your edges come together is going to be considered a vertex. And so a vertex is basically a point inside of your 3D model from which your edges run from. So it's where your edges intersect. So it's basically gonna be the points inside of your model. So an edge, is going to be the geometry that runs between your different vertices, right? So any of these corners on this box, or not the corner corner, but these corners that run between these points um, are going to be considered edges. So with the second mode, you can select edges and you can move them around. And then the third mode is face select mode. And so a face is basically the geometry that makes up the space in between your edges and your vertices. So these gray areas are considered faces. And if I go into face select mode, you can see how if I click on any of these, um, I can select them just like this. And so let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna hit the tab key and go back into object mode for a second. I'm just gonna do a shift A and I'm gonna add a UV sphere which is basically just a sphere that we're gonna use inside of a blender. I'm gonna scale it down. I'm gonna move it off to the side right here. And I should probably have my screencast keys on. I cannot get that to just stay on. Now we have this UV sphere. Well, let's say we wanted to edit this sphere rather than the cube and notice I'm back in object mode. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select this and then hit the tab key. And you can see how that puts me into edit mode. And notice how if we look at this sphere, it has a lot more going on than our cube did. But if we look at our sphere overall, um, you can see how this shape is basically ma made up of a number of edges and vertices and then the faces between them. And so each one of these inside of uh, edit mode can be selected and edited individually. So for example, I could select just these four 
pieces of this face and I could scale them out. I could move them. Um, you can move all of these different parts and pieces either individually or together. And so um, one of the easiest way to do one of the easiest ways that we can do that is just by selecting something and then using a tool to do something to it. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can select geometry inside of Blender. So the first way that you can do that is just by single clicking. And so you can see how if I single click like this, I can select one object um, inside of uh, my model. Um, so this can be good if you just need to, for something like this cube, that may be all that you need. For something more complex like this sphere though, you're rarely going to edit just one piece of this geometry, so you need to be able to select multiple different pieces. So the way that you can do that is you can do a shift click. So if I do a shift click, you can see how I can select multiple different pieces inside of Blender. So, and really I can add anything to my selection that I want to. So you can see how by shift clicking, I can add different things to my selection. And then if I was to scale them, they would all adjust at once. So you can see how these are all moving in and out. And this works the same way with things like vertices as well. So I'm going to click off of this to deselect. You can see how I can select different vertices in that same way, just by doing a shift click. And so then I can move them around. Um, like if I tap G or something like that, and I move these along an axis, you can see how I can edit multiple different things at once. So that's another way to select objects inside of Blender. Another way that we do this a lot of the time is by dragging a box. So you can see how if I drag a box with this tool right here, the select box selected, I can select basically everything inside of this box. One thing I do recommend when you do this though, because you can get kind of weird results when you do this is first of all, if you're going to drag a box, you probably want to do it from one of your straight on views. So you can access these either by tapping like the numpad one or three or seven or nine keys. Or you can just use the gizmo right here. But now if I drag a box, um, I get a nice uniform selection where before I got that kind of like random selection in here. But notice that when I selected all of these, even though my box was over the stuff in the back side, because this wasn't visible in my screen, it didn't actually get selected. And so the way that you can get around that, like let's say you wanted to select half of this sphere is you can click on this front face and you can either click on this button right here to go to wireframe mode, or you can hold the Z key and then move your mouse over wireframe mode like this. Now, if I click and drag a box, because my faces aren't getting in the way, you can see how I get that whole half of the sphere when I'm trying to select this. So if you're trying to do something like select half of a sphere, including stuff that isn't visible in material preview mode, just move this over to wireframe mode and then you can select more things inside of your model. And so then from here, now that we've talked a little bit about how to select things, there's also other things like loop selections, which we can talk about in a more advanced video. Um, basically those are going to be selections where you can hold the alt key and it's gonna pick up all of your edge loops in here. So you can see how I can use this and I can also do an alt shift and click in order to select basically the full loop of a number of edges around an object. I don't wanna to go too far down that path right now, um, but just know there are some more advanced selection things as well. But now I wanna talk a little bit about editing the geometry. We've talked about selecting it, now let's talk about editing it. And so most of the time when you make an edit, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select whatever geometry you wanna adjust. So in this case, let's say I wanted to select maybe like half of my sphere or something like this. Um, you're going to select that geometry and then you're gonna activate a tool in order to adjust it. So the way that that's gonna work is you're gonna select whatever you wanna edit and then you can either come over here and click on a tool and you can see how you've got your big four right here, um, your move, rotate, scale, and transform, um, as well as some other tools over here. But let's say, for example, we wanna make the inside of the sphere smaller. What I could do is I could activate a tool, like the scale tool, by tapping the S key, and you can see how that's going to make a change to the geometry that I have selected. And so that's basically how you're going to edit objects inside of Blender is by selecting things and then using those tools.
And notice that we have a number of different tools down here that we can use in order to do different things. And so I'm going to start by tabbing out of edit mode clicking on this cube and then tabbing back into edit mode so that I can adjust this default cube that I have in here. And so if you look at this, um, we can use any of these tools in order to make changes and they all do different things. So for example, this object right here extrudes objects. So if I was to select this face, for example, and then activate this extrude tool, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the face that I have selected and it's going to extrude it out. So basically that means that it's gonna move this face and then it's gonna fill in geometry from where my face was to where my face is now. And you can use this on multiple different faces as well. So let's say for example, notice that I'm in face mode, but if I did a shift click and I selected this face, and then I extruded this out, notice that I can extrude multiple faces at once. And what it does is it moves it in a direction and then it fills in geometry based on that. So this tool is gonna to allow you to extrude different things. And notice that you can activate this tool by using a keyboard shortcut. And a lot of the time that's what we're going to do. Instead of activating the tool by clicking on it right here, what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna click on a face and then we'll tap that keyboard shortcut like this. And so you can see how when I did that, when I tap the E key, this is going to allow me to extrude this and then click when I'm done extruding it. So a lot of these tools, we're gonna to use keyboard shortcuts to be a lot faster. So this next tool allows me to inset faces inward. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna take all of my edges, move them in like this um, in order to create a smaller face. And then I could go back and use that extrude tool again by tapping the E key and moving my mouse in order to create a recess on this face. And so this is generally how we're going to edit objects inside of Blender, is we're gonna have an idea of what a shape is going to look like, and then we're gonna use the various tools in order to get to it. So I'm gonna go back into object mode real quick. Notice I'm just using keyboard shortcuts now. I hit tab, and then I do a shift A, and I'm gonna add another cube. Then I'm gonna scale that down by tapping the S key, moving my mouse and clicking, and then I'm gonna move it by tapping the G key and moving my mouse and clicking. So notice how I am primarily using keyboard shortcuts in order to move things around. But let's say for example, for this one, that we wanted to inset this face in. So we would tap the I key to inset this in. And one thing to note is if you, when you first activate a tool, your mouse position is going to affect the way things inset or the way things work. So for example, if I have my mouse over this object around the center, and I type the inset tool, notice how it's really hard for me to inset this in a long way. Well, what I would do instead is instead of doing that, I would select this face, and if I had my mouse out here and I activate the inset tool, notice how it's a lot easier to scale this in. So your initial mouse position is going to affect the way that this works. And so, for example, let's say I was gonna do something like this. If I wanted to create a shape that had a number of different insets in here, or extrusions like this, you can see how I'm doing it all with keyboard shortcuts. And my goal is to make a video about every one of these tools. Obviously that's going to take me a little while, so I can't talk about every one of them in this video just because that would take a long time. But just note that this is in general how you're going to edit different things inside of your model. And so there's other things you can do as well. So these are your tools on the left-hand side that you're going to use um, in order to do some stuff, but you can also use tools over here on the right-hand side as well. So for example, you know, we'll talk more about modifiers in a different video. I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole in this one, but for example, you can add materials to your object inside of edit mode. And so you can also add materials outside of edit mode, um, but inside of edit mode, it allows you to apply them to individual faces. So for example, let's say we were to create a new material right here, and then I'm gonna create a second material right here. So I'm just gonna click plus and add a new one, and we're gonna call this material, we're gonna make it like a blue color. Well, what we can do inside of edit mode is we can apply materials to individual faces. So notice how this first face, or this first material has been applied to my whole object. Um, if we were to do a shift click and just select like three of these, for example, 
So if I had these three faces selected, I could click on this blue material and I could click on Assign. And you can see how I can use this to apply materials to individual faces. So generally in object mode, you can only apply materials to your overall object like this. So there's no real way for me to break this material up, right, um, inside of object mode. However, inside of edit mode, so if I was to remove this material, tab into edit mode, and then do an alt click. Actually, we're going to, for the whole thing, we're gonna assign this white material. And then, if I was to do an alt shift click, and select these different edges, I could add another material and assign it to just those faces. So that's something that you can't do in edit mode. You can only do an object mode if you want to apply different materials to different faces inside of your model. So there are other things that we're gonna be able to do over here on the right hand side as well in edit mode. Um, as well as the tools on the left hand side. So that's kind of an introduction to edit mode. Um, we will talk a little bit more about using these tools to create specific shapes in a future video, but this should give you a pretty good idea of how the workspace works and how you're gonna edit different things inside of your models. Um, if there's something you'd like me to get into a little bit deeper, leave a comment below, let me know, or just let me know how you like this tutorial. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.